welcome everyone uh, welcome to this video and uh, this is going to be very very useful lecture for all the iit jam aspirants and also for the jest and tifr aspirants because in this lecture we are going to cover three topics of wave optics which are actually not a very traditional topics and they are little bit diff different different topics you can say and they all were came in 2024 iit jam exam so i'm going to discuss all the questions which were there in iit jam 2024 examination and surprisingly all the three questions were not from the mainstream topics okay one question will be newton's ring another i'm going to dis discuss is diffraction grating and one top one question i can say we have seen a lot is from the uh, you can say from the wave plates so that was sort of simple question but other two are very much unexpected questions okay so we will also understand the entire concept of these questions which we we will understand in detail okay so let's begin and the first topic or the first question is on the interference of light and it is from the newton's ring so interference of light means that two light waves or the two waves combine together to form some sort of pattern now in order to get interference we have two kinds of situations either you can have division of wave fronts which you see in the young's double slit experiment that actually the wave splits and into the two different slits and then they interfere with each other that is known as the division of wave fronts or you can say division of phases and the second category is division of amplitudes where do we see division of amplitudes in the thin films in the newton rings the examples like that so division of amplitude means so let's say you have the light coming up and the light falls on some medium or some surface and it reflects just one example it reflects so now the reflected light and incident light will interfere with each other and gives you the interference pattern so what do you see actually is that the light which was coming has been some part has been refracted and some part is reflected so the two parts of the same light are interfering with each other okay so that is where we see the division of amplitudes the energy getting divided and those division of energies are interfering with each other and that is one of the examples of the inter amplitude split or you can say the division of amplitude is the newton's ring okay so this was your question we will come to the question later on but first we have to understand newton ring as such so that any in any future if this question is repeated or the similar question you see again you can solve that up so newton ring basically is a ring kind of fringes that you get on the screen so you have a screen and on the screen you will get some circular fringes as you can see here in the uh, diagram i have represented here so in this diagram you can clearly see that you are getting the circular fringes you have the yellow then you have some blackish part and then again yellow again the blackish part and so on okay this is not an ideal newton's ring if you do the ideal newton's ring the fringe width remains same but in this case the you can see the fringe width is changing okay and this is some sort of a practical sort of newton's ring but this is a overall view of the pattern that you will see clear now how do you get newton's ring and why do you get newton's rings so the experimental setup is very simple number one thing that you need is a plano convex lens you must have a plano convex lens convex lens this is your plano convex lens one side is plane and another is convex and it is placed on the plane of a glass so some glass is here so this is your glass and plano convex lens is placed on the glass and then you are using the monochromatic light so you are using this blue light to get the newton's ring so your rings will also be having the blue color okay in this case they must have used the yellow color uh, in this i am using the blue color so whatever you want you can use monochromatic means one wavelength or one frequency okay now what do we see here so you see the incident light is coming so this is your incident light it passes through the glass okay it will have refraction i am not showing it here so it will refract it will first refract here and it will refract here also i am not showing you the refraction but it will refract you can see 
first refraction might happen here and second refraction might happen here but for now we are saying that light is passing through the glass or oh, sorry lens so the light passes through the lens and then on the glass it hits it hits on the glass and as a result the light reflect back some part not entire light reflects back some part of the light reflects back so let's say the 100 light is coming 100 joule of energy light is coming 10 joule will reflect 90 will refract means it will go to the glass but some part will reflect back okay reflects back so now what will happen when the light reflects back then the incident light and reflected light interfere with each other and the pattern is formed so light comes it reflects and then that reflected light and incident light interfere with each other and gives you the uh, newton's rings fringes so incident light and reflected light interfere and produce circular fringes that is going to be the main idea now we need two things number one mathematics of this and number two why they these rings why these fringes are circular why not any other shape so let's understand so let's say i am looking at the fringe at this position i am interested in the fringe at this position so this is my center of the glass so this you can see is a center right and i want to see the fringe here so let's say i want to see the fringe at some at this point okay this point clear at this point the separation between the glass and the lens is t so let's say this is t so this t this is the separation between the glass and the lens and you can clearly see if you change the position this t will also change if you come closer the t will decrease if you go away the t will increase so if you change the position the value of t is changing and that is the only changing parameter in our experiment we are interested in looking at the change in thickness between the glass and glass and the lens and we will take care of that he how the t if how the change in t affects our experiment clear so let's understand that clear in order to do that we have to perform some very beautiful mathematics which is what is the optical path difference between incident light and reflected light we have to understand the very basic criteria of the interference okay, let's say the light is coming and it is reflecting when these two light waves combine will they give you maximum light or will they give you minimum light it depends upon the phase difference between them it depends upon the path difference between them so let's say that these two waves are combining and they have no phase difference with each other so they will give maximum let's say these two waves are combining and they have a phase difference of pi means both of them are opposite in phase then it will give you minima it will give you zero they both will cancel each other out so what we are interested here is if we want to see that at this position we will get maxima or we will get minima we should know what is the phase difference between the incoming light and the reflected light that is our interest and the phase difference is given by 2t minus lambda by 2 sorry not phase difference path difference is given by 2t minus lambda by 2 and this is very easy to see what is the path difference between this this blue line and this second blue line so first of all it is 2t because first the light will come and then it will go up so t plus t will give you 2t it will be 2t okay so number one is 2t and then lambda by 2 is also there lambda by 2 is also there so lambda by 2 is also there means what does that means lambda by 2 so the lambda by 2 phase difference or a part difference comes why because whenever you reflect from the rarer medium to denser medium so whenever you try to go from rarer medium so we are trying to go from air to the glass then additional path difference comes in or you can say additional phase difference comes in for example if you are sending the sine wave then after reflection it will become minus sine wave. phase difference will become minus sine that is why there is an additional phase difference of pi and additional path difference of lambda by 2. 
180 degree is a half wave. 360 degree is a full wave. So 360 degree means lambda path difference. 180 degree means lambda by two path difference. So whenever light tries to go from rarer medium to denser medium, there is an additional path difference which comes into play, which is given by lambda by two. And this 2T path difference is coming because of this geometry, this path, this lens. Okay, the incident light and reflected light has two times of this because first it will go below, then it will go up. So 2T will come and then it will interfere with the incident light. So 2T minus lambda by 2 is the total path difference between incident light and reflected light. This is the number one most important formula we need to know. Don't worry, all of these formulas are summarized in the formula sheet. So you, when you get these notes, you will see all of these important formulas in the formula sheet, which you need to keep in mind. So number one thing that we learned is incident light and reflected light are interfering with each other. Clear? So light comes, it reflects back. They both interfere with each other. And then the second thing that we learn is that what is the path difference between incident light and reflected light? 2T minus lambda by 2. 2t is coming because of the geometry light first goes down and then it goes up so 2t and the lambda by 2 is coming because our light is trying to go from rarer to denser medium because when the reflection happened reflection happened from rarer to denser medium boundary so boundary was from rarer to denser that is why additional lambda by 2 phase difference or a path difference came so this is your total path difference okay if we want constructive interference, if we want this to give you a constructive interference, then your path difference should always be equal to n lambda. That is a condition. It means 2t minus lambda by 2 should be equal to n lambda. And it means 2t should be equal to n plus half lambda by 2. Sorry, lambda. n plus half lambda. I can take this on other side. So 2t will become n plus half lambda. So this is your condition for maximum. If you want to get maximum, this is your condition. He, your thickness should be equal to n plus half lambda by 2. So wherever you see the thickness is this, either the, okay, let's put n 0. So if your thickness is lambda by 4, you will get maximum. Okay, now put n 1. So if your thickness is 3 lambda by 4, again, you get maximum. Now put n 2. If your thickness is 5 lambda by 4, again, you will get maximum. So depending upon your thicknesses, so wherever your thickness is lambda by 4, 3 lambda by 4, 5 lambda by 4, you are getting maximus. And why you are getting circul circular maximus? Because if you talk about this position, if I rotate, if I rotate, my thickness will still remain lambda by 4. Means I can rotate here. Means I can, it is side diagram, but if you look from the top diagram, top diagram, so if this is your, this, this is O and this is O and this position is R, this position is R. If I rotate everywhere, I remain is R. So this, this distance, this thickness is not going to change. If I rotate, this thickness will remain fixed. That is why when I'm rotating everywhere, the T is lambda by four, everywhere T is lambda by four. So I get my first circular maximum. Okay. If I go a little bit far. My thickness increased even more. My thickness becomes 3 lambda by 4. So if I rotate everywhere, my thickness is 3 lambda by 4. So I get my second maximum. Now, if I go even further, my thickness will increase even more. So thickness will become 5 lambda by 4. So if I rotate everywhere, my thickness is 5 lambda by 4. So I get my third maximum. So where am I getting maximums? Wherever my thickness is either lambda by 4, 3 lambda by 4, 5 lambda by 4, 7 lambda by 4. At all of these positions, I'm getting my maximum. So from this diagram, you can say that, okay, this might be the first maximum. So lambda by four, the second maximum will be five lambda by four. Third will be seven lambda by four. They're very closely spaced. You can see the fringes are very closely spaced. Clear? So that is the first point to learn. However, if you want destructive interference, means minima, means you want not dark, color you need some oh, sorry not bright color you need darkness you need black you don't need blue or yellow you need black dark lines minimus 
then the condition is that your delta x should be equals to 2n minus 1 lambda by 2. So we know these conditions from our lecture of interference, which we covered in the classes, right? So delta x is equals to n lambda if it is maxima and delta x is equals to 2n minus 1 lambda by 2 if it is minimum. Clear? So this is important. So we use this condition here. And now what is our delta x? What is the part difference? So part difference is 2t minus lambda by 2 and we make it equals to 2n minus 1 lambda by 2. So if we solve this up, you will get 2t equals to n lambda. It means that all of these thicknesses you will get minima. It means thick for the thickness n lambda by 2, for example, at 0, at uh, lambda, at 3 lambda by 2, at 2 lambda, at 5 lambda by 2, at all of these positions, you are getting minima. So whenever your thickness is zero, you get minima. Whenever your thickness is lambda, you get again minima. Whenever your thickness is three lambda by two, you again get minima. Whenever your thickness is two lambda, you again get minima. So you are getting minimas at these thicknesses and you are getting maximas at these thicknesses. So these two are the very important relations to remember. I will summarize this in the uh, lecture notes in the formula sheet. Okay. So we get the two conditions of maxima and minima okay, where we, at what thicknesses we will get maxima and what thicknesses we will get minima. Overall, what is changing in this pattern is maximum thickness only. Because as you go away, the thickness is increasing. You see, as you go away from the center, this thickness keeps on increasing. Right. And you alternatively keep getting maximum, minimum, 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 maximum, minimum, maximum, minimum, and so on. Okay. That is the kind of situation you are getting. Okay. Now, this is very, very important. So one thing you should remember is all fringes should have equal thickness. So your circles are equally thick, equally thick circles you will get. So that you have to keep in mind in an ideal Newton's ring experiment, the thickness of the circle is fixed. You are getting circle and then you are again getting, so your yellow strips, circular yellow strips, or the circular blue strips having the same thickness. Okay. So this was what our uh, experiment was. And this is what we need to keep in mind. Now we will see the what question was asked. Question was very simple actually. Once you know the theory, the question is very straightforward. Actually, we don't even need to remember any of the formula. Let's see. So they are saying that in a Newton's ring experiment, using the light of a free space, the wavelength is given by 518 nanometer. So they have given you some wavelength and uh, they have given you a experimental setup. Okay. The central fringe is observed to be bright. So they are saying at the center, the fringe is bright. So here you are getting a bright fringe. What is the least possible value of D? So now this experiment is little bit dif different. Why it is different? Because the lens is not sitting on the glass. Lens is little bit in the air but it does not change anything for us. It does not change anything for us. Uh, we know what is a part difference. So let's say one light is coming from here. Then the light will reflect back and then the incident and the reflected light interfere and it gives rise to the maximum minima fringes. So what is the thickness at this position? The thickness at this position is 2D and Minus lambda by two. Why? Because rarer to denser we were trying to go. So what is the total part difference at this position? At this position, uh, this this position, two d minus lambda by two. And if you want to get maxima, you know, your delta x should be equals to m lambda. You want minimum thickness because it is mentioned in the question. Your thickness. What is the minimum thickness? Least possible thickness. So for minimum value, what you we will take the smallest m, m is 0. So because your m can take value 0, 1, 2, 3. For minimum, we will say m is 0. So if we put m 0, our delta x will be 0. Now we will put our value of delta x. The value of delta x is 2d minus lambda by 2 and it is equal to 0. So our 2d is equal to lambda by 2. So our d is equal to lambda by 4. So if you do lambda and you divide by 4, so you will get 580 by 4, which is basically 145 nanometer, which is your option number A. So if your D is 145 nanometer, you will have maxima in the center. And that is what they were asking. 
So it was very simple to find delta x. It was 2d minus lambda by 2, and then just make it equals to m lambda. For minimum value, m will be zero, and you will get your value of d as given in this question. So now, any doubt you have in this Newton's ring concept or any problem, please let me know. Yeah. So the second topic is actually easy, and this has been in detail covered in my polarization lecture as well. But I will give you a brief idea here, just for a quick revision. The topic is polarization, and the subtopic is wave plates. And this is one of the very famous question of gate and even oh, sorry a jam and even it has been asked in the jest as well and we have seen this question in the TIFR as well. So this is a very standard topic and let's see what is this. So they are saying that there is a linearly polarized light and so on so forth. In order to understand the question, first we have to understand the topic of the wave plate or which is also known as a retarding plate. So wave plate is some sort of a material. We will not go too much in detail. It's some material. It works on the principle of the double refraction, two refractions. So when the light enters in a medium, in this wave plate, so you have a wave plate. So let me show you this wave plate. So let's say this box is your material. This box is your wave wave oh, sorry uh, wave plate, and the light is entering inside this wave plate. The moment this light enters, this light splits into two parts into two different different rays one ray is known as e ray and another ray is known as o ray e ray means extraordinary ray and o ray means ordinary ray e ray is deviated so when light enters e ray will deviate from the original path as you can see the blue line is deviated on the other hand o ray does not deviate and o ray just keeps on going in the straight path E ray is little slower, but the O ray is little faster. And also, they both obeys. No, sorry, one of them obeys Snell's law. Means O ray is called ordinary ray because it is ordinary and it obeys the Snell's law. But E ray is not ordinary. It does not obey Snell's law. Okay, so it does not obey the very fundamental law of optics, which is Snell's. Law. Okay, so that is why it is called extraordinary ray. So now they both have the one takeaway message is that both of them have the different speeds. Means for both of them, the refractive index of the material is different. That is why both of them have the different different speeds. O ray is looking, or you can say according to the O ray, the refractive index of the material is different. But according to the E ray, the refractive index of the material is different. That is why both of them have the different speeds. So that is what we use here, and this is happening because of the material. There are some special crystalline materials, or there are some special materials in this world which is available that give rise to such physics. So it is all the magic of the material. Click. Okay? These are the anisotropic materials. Anisotropic materials basically means that their properties depends upon many factors. What kind of source is there? What kind of direction you are going in? For example, O ray and E ray are going in the different directions. That is why their speeds are different. That is why they see the refractive index to be different. So not entire material have the same refractive index. If you go in this direction, refractive index is something else. If you go in that direction, refractive index is something else. So these kind of crystals are known as anisotropic. Material property is changing with the direction. Right. So take away message, both have different speed. Now, if both of them have the different speed, by the end, when they will reach the other end, there will be the phase difference between them. Phase difference. For example, very simple example. Let's say you and your friend both have the different speed of studying. By the end of the your graduation, there will be the phase difference between you and your friend. Right. So there is a phase difference between and in the end, what happens is now in the end, they will again combine together and come out as one ray. Come out as one ray. And this ray will be polarized. This could be polarized. I'm not saying for sure it will be polarized, but this could be polarized. There is a possibility that this light will be polarized. So the light came, splits into two parts. In the end, light again combines and it gives rise to the polarized light. 
so this is one of the way to polarize the light clear now when they were adding together here there was a phase difference between them and based on that phase difference it will be decided that if this light is linearly polarized if this light is circularly polarized, if this light is elliptically polarized, what kind of polarization do you have? So it all depends upon what will be the phase difference between this E ray and O ray when they will combine in the end. Okay. So that is the point here. So now we will go for the mathematics. So the idea is light splits into two parts and then in the end they again combine and give rise to the polarized light. Right. And uh, Depending on the phase difference between both of them, it will be decided ki if it is linearly polarized, non-polarized, or, or elliptically polarized, or circularly polarized. Okay? We will see at what at what phases you will have what kind of polarization. Okay? Refractive index seen by both the rays is different. So E ray says the refractive index of the material is any. O ray says that refractive index of the material is n i okay in order to move on we have to understand one more topic or one more concept which is known as optical path length optical path length is basically the path which is seen by the lights it is different from the actual path your actual path might be 10 meter but light will not agree to that light will say okay no this actual path is not 10 meter according to me the path is this so the light sees different path and you see different path. This is basically a relativity concept of relativity, not directly special theory of relativity, but it's a con combination of optical concept with the relativity concepts. So optical path length is a, uh, you can say the path as seen by the light and the formula for optical path length is given by diffractive index multiplied by geometrical length. So refractive index is, let's say this is your material. So this is your material. The refractive index of this material is N. And the geometrical length, which is an actual length, is T. Then what will be the optical length? Optical length will be N into T. N into T. And this is greater than the actual length. Optical length is always greater than the actual length. Why? Because inside the material, light slows down. So light takes more time to reach. Now, what is light thinking? What ha what is actually happened? Actually, what happened is that light slowed down. That is why light takes more time to reach. That is the reality according to you. But light will think something else. Light will think, no, no, I am not slowed down. Distance has increased. That is why the time taken was more. So light is thinking something else. You are thinking something else. Both of you are right. Both of you says that time will be more. Your idea is that distance is same, but the light speed is less in the medium. Light is saying my speed is not different, length is more. That is why the time is more. So that is a difference in opinion, but both of you are agreeing that time will be more. That is why uh, optical length is little bit more than the geometrical length. Clear? Okay. So this is clear. Now again, in interference of light, every time we reach to the same conclusion, ki what is the part difference between these two? These two light, what is the part difference between them? So what is the optical length covered by the extraordinary ray? It is diffractive index of extraordinary into T. And what is the part optical path covered by the ordinary ray? It is refractive index according to the ordinary ray into T. So NET into NOT. Okay. So these are the part difference for E ray and O ray. Because both of them are seeing the refractive index differently. For both of them, the refractive index is different. Okay. Now we talk about the path difference. So what is the path difference between them? We just need to subtract them. So we will get NE minus NO into T. Clear? So this is the idea that you get. So we get the path differences. Clear? Now we need to understand the conditions. Ki under what conditions you get what kind of polarization? Because as I said that depending upon the phase difference or depending upon the path difference, you will get different, different kinds of polarization. So you get a linear polarization if the phase difference is 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, so on, or n pi. So whenever your phase difference is 0 and or so on, n pi, then you get a linear polarization. 
you can convert this into path before this is phase difference you can convert into path difference formula to convert path difference is lambda by 2 pi into delta phi lambda is the wavelength divided by total phase total length divided by total angle multiply by your angle gives you the path difference so whenever the path difference is n lambda by 2 because if you put delta phi as n pi pi and pi will cancel and you will get n lambda by 2 so whenever the path difference is n lambda by 2 in that situation what you are getting is a linear polarization and whenever your phase angle is pi by 2 3 pi by 2 and so on in that case your delta x is equals to lambda by 4 comma 3 lambda by 4 comma so on so whenever your phase path difference is lambda by 4 3 lambda by 4 5 lambda by 4 in that case either you will get is elliptical or circular and whenever you are getting lambda by 2 3 lambda by 2 5 lambda by 2 in that or you can say uh, 0 lambda by 2 lambda 3 lambda by 2 4 2 lambda and so on at all of these values you will get linear polarization so these are the conditions you should know that under which condition you will get linear polarization and under which condition you will get elliptical or a circular polarization okay so these were all the concepts we need to know number one light will split fine what will be the path difference between them it will be n e minus n o into t and whenever the path difference is equals to this i will get linearly polarized and whenever my path difference is equals to this i will get either circular or the elliptical now let's come to our problem and this is our problem so the question says that a linearly polarized light is there wavelength is 600 nanometer and it is incident normally on the retarding plate okay it is incident normally on the retarding plate and this is your what i can say is n e minus n o so it is given to you n e minus n o is this and the wavelength is this now the emergent light is observed to be linearly polarized so when the light emerges it will be linearly polarized you see this word is very important irrespective of the angle between the direction and the polarization and the optical axis of the plate what should be the minimum thickness of the plate what should be the thickness of the plate so number one we use a formula for delta x we know for linear polarization our delta x should be equals to n lambda by 2 we need minimum thickness so we will put n as 1 so it will be lambda by 2 now you can ask why not n 0 see n is not 0 in this case possible because n 0 means there is no part difference that is not possible right because when you are reaching to the other end you might have at least some part difference no zero part difference is not possible that is why n equals to 0 is not physically possible in this case okay when you reach the other end there will be some part difference at least should be there so that is why n i am choosing is 1 for minimum that is why you see lambda by 2 here so delta x is equals to lambda by 2 so n e minus n naught into t will be equals to lambda by 2 so from there t comes out to be lambda by 2 into n e minus n naught lambda is given by 600 nanometer which can be written as 0 0.6 micrometer so 0 0.6 micrometer and this is given by 0 0.05 so 0 0.05 multiplied by 2 will be 0 0.1 so overall you get 6 micrometer as your answer so option a will be correct for this it means the minimum thickness of your material should be 6 micrometer right and uh, for that we use the two concepts what is the part difference and for linear polarization our part difference should be equal to this and we made both of them equal and we got our thickness okay now i will take your doubts anything for this 